Well, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Charlotte, for that introduction. It is always a pleasure to join you. So I am delighted to be opening uh, this conference once again. I know how important it is for CTA members, uh, but it's also very important to me. I value strongly the relationship that I have built up with the community transport sector uh, during my time at the Department for Transport. Now, as a transport minister, you realise pretty quickly that many of the decisions that you take will only really deliver results in the longer term. Uh, when you're planning new infrastructure like HS2, I'm fairly clear I won't be invited to the official opening. Uh, in fact, I might not even be alive. Um, though, though one, of my, one of my colleagues did say, well, I live to see HS2 start. And I said, well, we're planning to start in April, so let's see if you can hang on, please. Um, but what's inspiring about the great work going on about, uh, within this sector is that it realises results right away. And in turn, it's therefore clear to see how communities are benefiting. And that's why we're very pleased to work with the CTA on the second round of the Community Minibus Fund, uh, which closes on the 2nd of December. We remain committed to the sector to help you to continue the amazing work that you do across the country. I want to encourage as many of you as possible to apply to the uh, £2 million second round fund, which we hope could provide a further up to 50 or so vehicles. And that's on top of the uh, just around uh, 200 vehicles provided thus far in round one. Now, I talked about the success of the scheme at last month's CTA event over in uh, Canary Wharf, where the theme was the social benefits of transport innovation. Well, I hope some of you here uh, will make up some of the future success stories for the 2017 Community Minibus Fund. I'm pleased to announce today that the preferred supplier for the minibus at round two will be Minibus Options. They have a, a small display outside as well. The CTA has already had 316 requests for advice about the fund and 32 applications for vehicles. That is tremendously encouraging, so thank you for your interest. The more bids we attract, the more certain we can be that the vehicles are going to go to the most deserving people. Now, of course, the DFT also supports the community transport sector through the Bus Service Operators Grant, BSOG. Uh, transport always has really clumsy acronyms, but BSOG is an important part of the support package for bus services across our country. And I know that many community transport organisations benefit from this grant. Well, we've spent over £250 million for each of the last two financial years on BSOG. And we expect that uh, another approximately £250 million will be spent in this financial year too, even though it's not complete. However, that funding is not the only way in which we support this sector. The CTA acts as a critical friend when we're developing policy to ensure that we take the potential impacts on the sector into account. And there are some other crucial projects that can benefit from community transport organisations. Uh, Total Transport is one of those. Total Transport, I believe, has the potential to greatly improve the efficiency and delivery of road transport services to local people. The concept is a simple one. It involves integrating transport services commissioned across the public sector, allowing resources to be shared and coordinated more efficiently. In March 2015, we allocated £7.6 million to 37 pilot schemes right across the country run by different local authorities in England. And these pilot schemes will run for a maximum of two years. There are around £2 billion currently provided for local transport each year by a number of agencies. I think there is significant potential to get better value by being better coordinated, better organised. For example, the contribution that the community transport sector makes to local transport could be recognised more widely. And the services you provide could be better integrated, resulting in cost savings and a more effective service to passengers. Mobility centres are also realising the value that community transport can bring. Mobility centres have a long-term ambition to transform themselves into community hubs over the next five years. Now, these hubs could, as part of their driver assessment service, 
further signpost community transport services to those who are no longer able to drive, allowing them to retain their independence, access jobs, access services within their communities. And as these changes develop, the DFT will be happy to help bring community hubs and community transport together. We've also thought about this sector whilst drafting the Bus Services Bill. And you'll uh, hear more about it. The Head of Buses and Taxes within the DFT, Stephen Fiddler, will be uh, discussing this uh, in more detail with you later today. But this bill is designed to help public and private sectors work together more effectively. However, when we looked at the bill's provisions, we realised it could have a negative implication for the community transport sector. So we made sure that community transport services operated under Section 19 permits would automatically be exempt. We did the same for those operating under Section 22 permits. This is to ensure that no unnecessary burdens are placed on your operations and the vital services you offer continue to be unaffected. By building a strong relationship between government and industry, we will continue to act in your interests because your interests are also your community's interests. The work that you do every day, helping people to get to work, to access services, reducing social isolation, bringing people together, removing the barriers they would otherwise face using the wider transport network, proving that transport doesn't just help people get around, it helps them get on and it helps keep communities together and viable. The fact that you do it for charitable purposes, often volunteering your own time and resources makes the contribution, your contribution and the contribution of the sector even more impressive. So I would just like to finish, if I could, with a, a simple thank you. Uh, a thank you to all of you individually, to your teams, to your organisations and to the CTA for representing your sector so well. I think you are doing a fantastic job and I'm extremely pleased that as a, I'm personally part of a government which is going to be working with you to support you to develop this work and see more of the benefits reach more people. Transport is at the heart of viable communities, making our economies work, making our communities work. We wouldn't be able to achieve anything like the social and economic progress if we didn't see the work of you and your organisations around our country. That is a great thing to be able to say about the work that you do. So thank you for it and thank you for inviting me to come here today. I would just wish you every success with your conference today and thanks for the opportunity to come here and say a few words this morning. Thank you.